Well, as millions of people around the country and world continue to self-isolate, big tech companies are working to curb the spread of disinformation online. In some extreme cases, you've got these websites, Facebook, for instance, that have come under fire for not only allowing false information to spread on their platform, but for having been accused of providing a platform for people to plan and organize anti-quarantine protests. I want to bring in CNET senior producer Dan Patterson, who joins us now. So, Dan, you know, these companies like Facebook and Google, they've told us over and over again they're improving their fact-checking services across the network. Why are we still seeing such a problem with disinformation? Hey, it's good to see you, Rena. So, uh, there could be a few factors at play here. Uh, one is that, look, for every crisis, sadly, there are cynics that will exploit uh, a crisis for their own financial gain. And social media, whether we love it or hate it, is just an information uh, distribution vector. So we will see a larger or an increase in what we call threat actors or just bad guys uh, distributing uh, malware and other forms of uh, malicious activity across social networks, no matter what the crisis is. But particularly with this crisis, we're seeing some really interesting activity, including state-sponsored, what we call attacks. So uh, from China, we have seen this, what we call a, a mixed media attack. So they use state-sponsored media to kind of change the message. When I say state media, I mean, uh, for example, here in the United States, that might be Voice of America. Uh, so we see Chinese state media reframing the uh, COVID-19 crisis uh, around the United States, uh, what they call a failure to act and away from uh, their own government's responsibility. Then we see social media at play on Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Twitter, and other mainstream sites that not only shifts the narrative, but attacks those who are uh, reporting on or talking about facts. So we mean healthcare workers, uh, uh, political leaders, journalists, nonprofit leaders. These people are being attacked by uh, uh, some of these Chinese-linked trolls. And we do have some pretty good data on this coming from an organization called Recorded Future that literally records the entire internet, and then they trace IP addresses and other fingerprint data back to their source. So another avenue is Reddit. It's also very popular when you form to post and spread conspiracy theories as well. I know, Dan, you've been looking into this. What have you found? So Reddit is uh, a social network that is kind of like all of the comments, uh, very little content, but all of the comments. Uh, in fact, there there is actually very good user generated content on Reddit. And one sharp observer a few days ago found that the what what are called MX records, these are mail exchange records. It's what email addresses use to point to the correct direction. So when I send you an email, it goes to you and not a stranger. MX records are unique. It's it, you you can't point an M or you it's hard to forge an MX record and point it in a, a different or a fake direction. And they found that these MX records uh, around the protests related to the coronavirus uh, stay-at-home uh, uh, orders appear to come from one or a very small group of individuals, no matter what the states are. So, uh, for example, Minnesota and Iowa uh, shared some of these, again, threat actors, or at least a, a very common um, uh, IP and domain name uh, registration information. Now, this isn't enough to say that one person is authoritatively behind this because they use what we call proxy registration. That is kind of putting up a, a wall that allows uh, the register to hide their identity from search engines like Who Is or Built With that allow us to look at the forensic data. Uh, but I did speak with a source who works at a major domain name provider who said, yes, these are all coming from one person or one organization. One organization. Do they understand who that organization might be? Any more understanding? That person was familiar with, uh, with who uh, registered it, but was not willing to share it because uh, this was, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the information was not obtained uh, through an official channel. Mm. I know that's why it's so murky when you're talking about online and disinformation, Dan. But, you know, the fact that 
since January, there have been a spike in domain names related to COVID-19. Yeah. How do you regulate that? And what does that mean exactly, Dan? Well, you can't really regulate it, nor should you really regulate it. Uh, almost anybody can go and register or purchase a domain. Uh, we use domain re domain name registrations as kind of a lagging indicator to understand the scale of an event. It doesn't have to be a crisis. It could be something like the Super Bowl. Is this year's Super Bowl more popular than last year's uh, by domain name registrations? It's not the only indicator that we use, but it's one that's pretty good and at least helps us understand uh, some trends about uh, why and how popular a particular trend is. So the coronavirus trend, again, using this data uh, obtained through Recorded Future, uh, the domain name registrations were off the charts. And many of these, a, a larger portion than normal, used what, again, we call proxy registration. So it was difficult to uh, ascertain uh, the domain name owners. Now, there are perfectly legitimate reasons for not wanting your name associated with a domain, but the large scale here and the forensics that, that indicate China would show that, uh, look, there, there certainly are some actors here who are involved in setting up sites that could have some bad purposes. Maybe these are just scammers trying to uh, make a buck through the advertising or selling fake cures. Maybe they're people running affiliate marketing sites. These are kind of advertising blogs. Or maybe they are bad actors trying to sow propaganda and discord.